Calling all detectives. A lot of people were strolling in the park Sunday afternoon. And under his bright disguise, nobody recognized the face of death. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, knows that some theories on crime are nothing but a lot of hot air. The balloon man with his gaily colored wares was drifting with a crowd of Sunday strollers through Northcott Park. I guess I was the only one looking at him. The rest of the crowd was watching a woman walking along with a small boy. That's her, Clorinda and little Bobby. Those two names were always news. Clorinda, the musical comedy star, made headlines four years earlier when she eloped with Rex Hewitt, the Shakespearean actor. And even bigger headlines a year ago when she and Rex had a noisy court battle over the custody of their son, Bobby. She won, and soon after, remarried, this time to wealthy socialite Grant Leggett. Nice lady, gracious lady, buy the balloon lady for the bambina, huh? A news photographer elbowed me aside as Clorinda hesitated before the balloon man. What a human interest shot, famed actress buying balloon for baby. Clorinda and the street vendor made a big fuss about selecting just the right balloon. Only the best for the lovely lady. Ah, I give you a yellow one on a stick. And this, the red one, you blow him up later, eh? A present, better me. The old fellow doffed his cap, twirled his mustache, made a deep bow. Clorinda posed in an attitude of gracious acceptance. Hold it. Thank you. Now, how's about a story, Clorinda? Any truth to the rumor that you and Liggett are feuding that you'll be leaving soon for Reno? The answer he got was a flash of the celebrated Clorinda smile and the music of her laughter. A nice laugh. Maybe the last one she ever had. Because that night... Flash, the beautiful singing star known to Mr. and Mrs. Theodore Goa as Clorinda is dead. Her lifeless body was discovered this evening by Grant Liggett, her husband. He claims it was suicide, but the police suspect murder. Suicide or murder? That was the question that faced the police when the famous stage star Clorinda was found dead. When I walked into the homicide bureau, Lieutenant Dawson was talking to somebody at the far end of the room. I worked my way through the snarl of lawyers, reporters, and cops. And Dawson, I just heard the news on the radio. thought maybe I could help. Maybe you can, Jerry. Uh, this is Grant Liggett. Mr. Liggett, meet Jerry Browning. Dawson's face was flushed with embarrassment. Grant Liggett was no ordinary prisoner. In fact, we haven't booked him yet, Jerry. His story sounds straight, but I don't know. Suppose you listen to it. Very little to tell, Mr. Browning. I was at my club all afternoon and evening. When I came home, I heard little Bobby crying. I investigated and found that his mother was dead. To me, that didn't sound like a grief-stricken husband, but at least the guy seemed honest. It's common knowledge that my wife and I were planning to separate. I think Clorinda deliberately took the poison, maybe to frighten me, and overdid it. Clorinda overdid everything. I turned away from Liggett, walked Dawson to the window. Dawson, I saw Clorinda this afternoon. And she was in a fine humor. Didn't act like a woman planning to take her life. Jerry, maybe you'd better go with me to her apartment and see what we can find. Clorinda's apartment was in the swanky Northcott Manor section, near where I'd seen her walking with her son. A uniformed cop let us into the apartment. Nobody here, no loot. Buddy's down at the crane lab and they shipped the kid over to his father. Dawson nodded. The father's Rex Hewitt, the actor. He's at the court theater, Jerry. Yeah, I know. Come on, let's go to work, Dawson. It was a good idea, but there wasn't much to do. Fingerprint detail found only her prints, the babies, Liggett's, and the maids. And she was probably off duty today. Otherwise, Clorinda wouldn't have been walking the kid. Right. We talked to the maid. She has a watertight alibi, spent the whole day at her cousin's. What about the poison? Dawson pointed to a bottle neatly ticketed and officially sealed. That's it. Same stuff actresses put in their eyes to make them sparkle. I held the bottle to the light. She didn't take this stuff, Dawson. The bottle's almost full. Dawson shrugged it off. Maybe it doesn't take much. Anyhow, that's what the medical examiner says killed her. We walked into little Bobby's room. Poor little fella. Say, Jerry, maybe I ought to send some of those toys over to him. That fuzzy bear, these balloons... 
Dawson held up the big yellow balloon and the uninflated red one. I grabbed them away from him. Bobby doesn't need these. You do. Look. This is how Clorinda was poisoned. I was right. The mouthpiece of the little red balloon was jagged and eaten away in spots by the poison it had been coated with. Dawson put in a quick call to headquarters to round up all the street corner balloon vendors in town. The cops got their names and addresses from the city hall licensing department, rounded up the men, and we interviewed them at headquarters. The guy we want isn't in this gang, Dawson. I saw him, remember? Wait a minute. I've got an idea. I called the city news bureau, finally got through to the photographer who'd taken Clorinda's last picture. All right, Jimison, we'll pick you up in five minutes. And get one of your staff artists to come along. I want him and his drawing materials. Dawson and I drove with the two men over to the court theater. Under the marquee, in front of a life-size portrait of Rex Hewitt in the role of Hamlet, I told the artist what I wanted. Draw one of those old-fashioned black corduroy hats on that figure. That's it. And now a big mustache. An earring. And now sketch in a loud jacket. A Windsor tie. And a bunch of balloons. Okay, Jimison, recognize this picture? Do I? That's the balloon man, all right. I gotta call my paper, but first... Jimison took a picture of the picture while Dawson and I, we took off after a murderer. We got him. Rex Hewitt gave up awfully easy. In his confession, he told how Clorinda refused to let him see little Bobby, and that he hadn't minded it so much as long as the kid had a decent home. And then he heard that Clorinda's second marriage was breaking up. Clorinda had spoiled his life and Liggett's, and he intended to stop her before she did the same to his child. To him, Clorinda was pure poison. And it was by the same kind of poison he knew she always used as part of a makeup that he got rid of her. Maybe his disguise as a simple seller of balloons would never have been discovered if it weren't for his typical actor's instinct to pose, even in his role of murderer. Like I said, a criminal has an inflated ego. And no matter how he balloons up his story, sooner or later, it blows up in his face.